All right, I want to bring in Dr. Monica Gandhi now. She's the professor of medicine and associate division chief at the University of California, San Francisco. So I guess, Dr. Gandhi, the report card is out right now for the, for the first semester of school. Uh, we got a really bad grade in the media. It sounds like you got an A, so good on you. Um, let me start with your reaction, just in trust levels, because all joking aside, it's important, it's people's health, and, and they're split on who they trust. Yeah, you know, to be fair, um, the CDC, the FDA, and the NIH have had really different messages at times throughout the pandemic. And they had different messages on masks. They had different messages on booster, the necessity for booster shots. Um, they said they were going to upgrade masks, then they didn't, testing, they didn't. Um, so actually, we can't blame people. I have to say, we have three major groups that help form our health, NIH, FDA, and CDC. And they have publicly played out confusion. Mm. Well, I guess my question for you then is if 63% of people that we surveyed trust their doctor, where are the doctors getting the information? Aren't, aren't you getting it from the CDC, from these federal organizations and other national and international studies? No, you know, I think what's happening is that doctors are getting it from original papers and original and, and making their own assessments of the original data. And I, we do have a public health messaging problem in this country where if we only put a couple of people on TV and they're not saying the same things, it's really confusing. What we need, what the doctor does, should do, and have been doing, I think, is you look at the original study of the vaccine effectiveness of safety, and then you sit and communicate that to your patient. Mm -hmm. Do we need to wear this type of mask? Do we not? Do we need distance? Do we not? Like, I think it's everyone's doing their own research now because I'm, I'm not getting it from, from messaging from the CDC. Right, and clearly that's a problem. And I don't know if you have an answer to this question, but why wouldn't the, the top federal health officials be getting the information from the same original data and reporting that all of the doctors are doing? I think there's been a lot of politicization in this country. I think that there's a tendency to put out statements in sound bites instead of just sitting and explaining it. So a good example is this. The CDC director a week ago Friday had her own, Dr. Roblensky had her own press conference. This was not what she'd been doing all along. This was a great idea. This was reporters being able to ask the questions of a specific new standard, which is the isolation and quarantine guidelines. Just that one presser alone was exactly what was needed for her to take the time and explain the IMQ guidelines. That is what's needed. I mean, I was just thinking to myself, like, after that happened, can we have that happen every other day or at least once a week where the CDC director sits there and just explains it all? Because she knows it all. She's very smart. So she's great. So I, I, I think that's what's been missing is clean communication by the people that we need to trust to the public and taking time and not doing sound bites on TV. Yeah, well, I'm not gonna pretend that the media doesn't play a major role in all of this. Clearly in that survey we do, just 10% of people trust the media. I don't know the question if that involves social media, how large that net was cast, but what can we be doing differently in our reporting of the pandemic and how we cover it? You mentioned sound bites. Um, we report the facts, we, we report what we're told. Sometimes we don't have all the information. Actually, it's something like what you do on this program, which is you do take the time to let people explain it um, and what were the original studies. Like, it just takes more time to, because medicine is not actually easy. It's never a sound by thing. It takes like a couple of minutes to explain things, the immune system or whatever needs to be explained. So giving people more time. Right. I think this is the third time you and I have talked in the last week, and I think yeah. five, five to six minutes you each. And I always have more questions, and I'm out of time. Uh, I want to talk to you about testing real quick. There are a lot of concerns about testing. We saw that issue of some of these testing sites that are popping up across the country that aren't actually doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, what are your concerns when it comes to testing and how we got to this point? You know, what happened is we didn't have the testing infrastructure that the UK did. We just didn't. Um, and to try to pay catch up um, in the middle of the fastest and highest pace surge that we've had um, to date is not going to work. Probably by the time we get those tests out, uh, the Omicron surge will go down like we talked about yesterday because the Omicron surge is now peaking and coming down. So 
we will have to sort of later say to ourselves what happened, but I can't see a way to fix this quickly enough to get the tests out to American people by the time the Omicron surge comes down. It is a referendum that we have to discuss in this country what happened. So if people are feeling ill right now, maybe they can get their hands on an at-home test. Maybe the line isn't so long to go take a test in person. What do you advise them to do? And what are the biggest mistakes people are making right now in terms of uh, administering the tests? You know, if you can't, if you can't get a test, it's okay. Like stay home for five days until after your symptoms. Why did Dr. Lenski say that? Why did the CDC say that? Because the largest contact tracing study has shown us that the transmission occurs within the first five days of getting symptoms. That's what they base their new recommendation on. So if you can't get that five day to test out negative because you don't have to test out negative, then it's okay. But please just stay home for those five days and wear a mask for the five days after. I think those were clear guidelines. Quarantine, if you've been exposed to someone, you don't have to test, just wear a mask for the next 10 days. These were clear guidelines that CDC put out to avoid just this problem. Yes, admittedly, they knew that we didn't have the tests, but we don't have the tests. Like there's no way to get yeah. there yet. And so just follow the CDC guidelines. That's what I would do. All right. Uh, finally, I want to talk to you about masks. And there was a chart that I came across featured in an Axios article that I want to put up for people at home. It illustrates the risk of infection with different mask combinations. And it shows three different types. You've got N95 with a nose piece, N95 without it, and then surgical masks. So on the left, you see the risk of infection when both people are wearing the N95. And it's at about 0.14% in terms of transmission. On the far right, you can see it jumps all the way to 10.4%. So roughly about 75% more effective wearing the N95 with the nose piece. What type of mask should people be wearing? What types of changes and how long will we be doing it? Well, I'll tell you, the CDC didn't yet change the mask recommendations, but if you want the best type of mask, it's an N95, a KN95, an FFP2, a um, KF94, a double mask, surgical plus cloth, or one of those cloths with the filter inside of it. All of those are excellent mask options, excellent, and they will all give you better protection. Don't wear a cloth mask anymore, and if you're gonna wear a surgical, tuck it in on the sides and double loop, double loop over the ears to make it fit tighter. All right, I hear you. Uh, congratulations on your, your good grade on the first semester of the pandemic. Um, I hope it's cumulative because we can all do better uh, when the final scores come in. Dr. Gandhi, as always, thank you for your time. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.